Hey everyone, I'd like to welcome you to the Rockcast today. I'm Dave Chisholm. Got with me Dennis Morgan. Good hey, to be hey. back with everybody. Good to be here. I'll yeah. tell you, we're starting a new series this week. It's going to be exciting. And I'm calling it Experience Is It the Best Teacher? Uh oh. No. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> I've some got a lot say of it. it is. Yeah, it's, well, in some certain situations, but yeah. sometimes it's not so good. Not so good. Mm. Uh, I think the children of Israel can attest to that. Good example. You yes, know, they and that's can. what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about, you know, this first part. I'm using this book that I wrote. Um, it's called Hashtag Follow yeah. God, Authority, and You. And it's coupled with another book called Hashtag Lead. And let me give you a shameless plug, because if you're out there and you are in any capacity at leading people, managing people, doing any volunteer leadership in your church, these are must reads, because you have broken down these principles Mm -hmm. in a very practical sense that is a game changer for anybody that's going to have any influence on this earth. Yeah. You know, I started this revelation back in our first church split, Mm -hmm. which happened around 93. And we, I'd been pastoring since '86, so mm-hmm. there was seven year period of I'm gonna call it pastoral bliss. <laughs> yeah, I have a kind honeymoon of a, period. Yeah, I kind of have a testimony. First seven years of ministry, I couldn't do nothing wrong. Yeah. Second seven years, I couldn't do nothing right. Yeah. Well, I had made some classic errors, mm-hmm. some typical young leader mistakes. Right. And usually that comes around having people in power that maybe shouldn't have been in power mm-hmm. or. You know, putting more weight on people than they could have. We never had a character issue. We had a fellowship issue. Right. And um, I learned something after that split. I was going through an emotional. I was a, a train wreck. Oh, I can't imagine. I mean, best friends overnight. Yeah, almost enemies. enemies. Yeah. Um, it just it really traumatized my whole family. Yeah. Traumatized so many people. The people who left were traumatized, the people who stayed were traumatized, and it all came down to basically just saying, I don't like the way you do things. Hmm. <clears throat> you know, and I kept saying all the time, I'm saying, I haven't done anything wrong other than my leadership style. Right. You know, I hadn't, there was no character issue in our church split. It was just simply my number two just simply said, I don't like the way you do things. His model thought was yeah. better than your model. Yeah. And he wanted to be number one, I guess. Mm. So when we went through that process, um, I had I was a train wreck, and I had met at that time uh, Pastor Frank Sebersing, yeah, out of Toronto, um, and I met him through Prophet Kevin Leal, and I went up ministered in his church. Well, he's an outstanding teacher. Yeah, he is. The guy gets revelation. I mean, now is he a world champion in the sense of the wrestling world. He was a nine-time world heavyweight tag team champion wrestler. Yeah, He's brilliant in his mind. And I'll never forget when I was going through the one of, I'm going to call it the worst time of my life. I'll never forget something he said to me. He said, Chisholm, you're going through the process. Hmm. And I said, what do you mean the process? He said, you're going through the process of God. And I'm like, what do you mean? He said, you don't understand this, do you? And I said, no, I don't understand it. He said, everything, how God builds character in a man is he has a process. He takes the man, he blesses the man, he breaks the man, and he gives the man. And this is all demonstrated in every Jewish meal. Mm-hmm. It's demonstrated with Christ on the road to Emmaus with the disciples. Mm-hmm. It's demonstrated in the 23rd Psalm. It's actually demonstrated. It's a repetitive pattern yeah. in the scriptures of how God builds character. Yeah. And now in early Christian training, I'm going to call it my Bible college years, I had this idea that we come to the rock, we're broken, Right. We submit to the breaking, we're blessed. Mm-hmm. And so I said back to the man, I said, now, wait a minute. I said, you say God takes the man. Now, if you remember on the road to Emmaus, Jesus took the bread. Mm-hmm. He blessed, blessed the it. bread. Then he broke, broke the it. bread. Yeah. And then he gave the bread. And it says specifically, and the eyes were opened at the breaking of the bread. Wow, that's right. And he said, Chisholm, you're in the breaking process. He said, I said, I don't understand. I thought I was broken when I came to Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, no, no, no. You were just starting. 
And I said, now, wait a minute. So you're saying God takes you, which is salvation. Mm -hmm. He blesses you. He said, that's called premature promotion. And I'm like, what? He said, it's called premature promotion. God does this. And I said, why? Why would he bless you and then break you? Break you later, only after blessing you, yeah. And I'll never forget what Pastor Frank said to me. He said, Chisholm, if you hadn't tasted of the goodness of God, you would never survive the breaking. Oh, yeah. So true. Oh. So true. And then after the breaking comes the blessing. Yeah. And if you walk through the 23rd Psalm, there it is again. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall, shall not, not want. want. He takes the man. Whew. He leads me beside still pastures and, you know, st or still waters and green pastures. He restores the my soul. The you know, he does all this. And then it says, lo, <laughs> though I walk, walk through, through the, the valley of the shadow of <laughs> yeah. death. Hello. There's the breaking. breaking. Yeah. Then he comes back, restoration. Yeah. And giving. Now your life becomes food for others. Wow. But you got to survive that breaking process. Man. Now, <clears throat> the thing is, it may take a lifetime for that to happen. And here's yeah. the other thing I found out about the process of God, which is explained more in this book, mm -hmm. is this may happen multiple Repeats times itself. in your life. Yeah. Because there are different areas in your soul that are being restored. Because remember Psalm 23. Yeah. What is God doing? He's restoring, restoring. my soul yep. back to original intent, yeah. which is perfection, actually. And I had somebody say one time, it was kind of like this. You're always in a place where you're either going into the wilderness, you're in the wilderness, or you're coming out of the wilderness. Yeah. But yeah. it's a constant it's a, recycling it's a or a process. Yeah. 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 So when I figured that out. I'll, I'll never forget, I, I realized something that saved my life at that time, yeah. saved my ministry. And that was what was happening to me was not that extraordinary. It was actually part of the process of God. Wow. He was refining my character. He was teaching me to be a more effective leader. Mm. And during that process, I, I did another thing, um, again, Prophet Kevin Leal. I, I, I can't give him enough shout outs because that man revolutionized my life with yeah. revelation of understanding the church yeah. and how to build the church. And I'll never forget, he had called me one day and I was, man, I was, again, I was in the process, man. Yeah. I was in the breaking. He's like, how you doing? How you doing, Dave? And I said, man, it's rough. You know, and he goes, look, I'm in Chicago preaching for a few days. Come on up here. I'll take care of everything. And I was literally at that time, I said, Kevin, I don't have money to get to Chicago. Yeah. And I don't have money for a hotel. He goes, you stay with me. I'll take care of everything. And so I drove to Chicago and uh, sat in a few meetings, a few nights, and we were staying downtown in a hotel. And I'll never forget, uh, we got up one morning and <clears throat> we were going to get lunch. And he asked me a question. He said, have you ever read the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership? by uh, Maxwell, Maxwell, and I said, never heard of it. He said, come on, we're going to the bookstore. <laughs> and so we went to this bookstore, and uh, I'll never forget, got back to the hotel that night after the meeting, and I started reading that book. And I finished it about 6 o'clock that morning. Wow. The sun came up. Kevin wakes up. I'd been up. I read the book all night. And he woke up, and he said, "What? You, didn't you sleep? And I said, no, man, I've been in this book. And he goes, really? I said, yeah. And he goes, well, what do you think? I said, I violated 18 out of 21 irrefutable <laughs> laws of leadership. <laughs> That's a long night That's of a truth. That's a long list of, we got to fix this. <laughs> yeah. And uh, again, there were principles of leading that I was never trained in, and I right. didn't understand. And so when I talk about mm. is experience the best teacher, yeah. my answer is always no. 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 It's the one you remember the most. That's true. Because yeah. I'll never forget the pain, yeah. the suffering. You know, if you years. smash your thumb with a hammer, it'll have an effect of memory that someone telling you, be careful you don't hit your thumb will never have. Right. But what's the best teacher? Yeah. Someone telling you, 
Oh, by the way, keep your thumb out of the way because mm-hmm. if that hammer comes down on a full swing, you'll 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 suffer for many days of pain and lose your right. nail. You know. Yeah. And so that's why I always come back and say, no, it's not the best teacher mm-hmm. for me. Experience was a teacher that put me into despair for a couple of years. Well, and how many people go into that despair, but they don't have the. Uh the uncovering, so to speak, of the process of God. I mean, they stay in frustration and, and end up yeah. in burnout because yeah. they don't understand it. Yeah. I mean, so this series is going to unlock a lot of things in some young leaders, mm-hmm. middle-aged, whatever, people that are in the process that don't even know yeah. it. You're going to give them hope. Well, you know, we always have this thing, and it's going to happen at some point in your life, and that is we think it ain't going to happen to me. Right. You know, it's like when I was that first seven years of pastoring, I was the pastor that a church split wasn't going to happen to. Mm-hmm. I was the pastor that a main leader wouldn't betray. I was not going to have a Judas. Right. You know, I was not going to do this. I was not going to do that. I was in the blessed life. Mm-hmm. And that's what I you re- see. You know, for example, I'll never forget one day I was sitting in my office and I was probably at this time maybe 30. And this guy had asked to see me. And uh, he came in and he was in his 60s. And he looked at me and he said, I'm, I'm traveling around. He said, I'm a retired pastor. And he said, uh, are you in a denomination? I'm like, no, we're an independent church. And he goes, well, it's a good thing I'm here today. And I said, why is that? And he said, because I'm here to talk to you about your future. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, what kind of plans do you have for as you get older? And I looked at him, and I'm so arrogant and cocky at that 30-year-old age, yeah, you know. I said, forever. well, if Jesus does tarry, I'm worked till I drop. And he goes, let me tell you a story. And he told me how he had planted and pioneered and pastored a church for 30 years. And he said, one day the board walked in and said, we think you're too old, and so you're fired. Just like that. Just like that. He said, I had nothing. He said, you know what I'm doing right now? He said, I should be living my golden years. He said, I'm working this job so I can make a living, number one, and number two, so I can help young pastors like you not make the same mistake I did. Wow, that's good. Well, I blew the guy off Mm -hmm. and sent him out of my office, only to be penniless a few years later after a church split, Yeah, and then recognizing that you know, the only security I had was the faithfulness of God, which, it, believe, believe me, is beyond any security sure. we could ever have in the world. But there comes a point of where Jesus expects us to be good stewards. Yeah, gave us the could wisdom. Could God have supernaturally fed the world during the famine of Egypt when Joseph was set in? Yeah. He could have. He could have created yeah. wheat just like that. Just like that. But he didn't. Nope. He said, store up for seven years mm-hmm. of plenty, so you'll have something to eat in the seven years of famine. Right. So God gives us wisdom. It's like right now, you know, I have people say to me all the time, do you have a war chest set aside of, you know, food that is good for 20 years? And I'm like, I need to. I don't, but I need to. Right. Again, that's just wisdom when mm-hmm. we look at the culture and when we look at this coming economic probably right. collapse and global reset that's happening. Right. So we've got to learn – from others' mistakes, right? And uh, experience is definitely not the best teacher in this. No, it's not. And you know, I think it comes down also to a choice. You know, you talked about when you know that guy came, and then you sent him packing because you weren't able to have the foresight to see what was coming. But I had all the answers. You had all the answers, but I mean, really, that's what it comes down to: is mm-hmm. you know, are you going to rebel against God's authority that brings you the truth, or yeah. are you going to be your own God in your own life right. with all the own answers? Right. I'll never forget. I really believed in my eschatology back in the eighties in the 90s, I really believed sometime around the year 2000, Jesus was going to return. Yeah, Y2K. I didn't know the day or the hour, but I knew it was going to be around the year 2000, right? Yeah. Because I had all my eschatology scriptures. After two days, he'll revive us on the third day. It's been 2,000 years. I've given you a day for 1,000 years, 1,000 years for a day. Had it all lined up, mm-hmm. all the two, three-day theory. Right. It turned out to be more of a theory than a fact, and uh, we're, still, we're here. still here in yeah. 2022. You're here right? too. We're yeah. here. We're still here. Yeah. But I'll never forget one day, uh, my wife. We did nothing to prepare for the future. Nothing. Well, you know, you set up my first four hundred one k, and I was fifty some years old, right? Before I had one penny yep. in retirement. Yep. 
And I'd opted out of Social Security as a young pastor because back then that's what they all did. Right. You know? yeah. So I had no government help. Right. And uh, so you, thank good you you and the board intervened and said, we've got to get you started on something here because, yeah. you know, if you ever yeah. have a health issue or something, you're done. Yeah. And so uh, it's amazing, though, when I look back and I see – God was intervening and trying to intervene in my life, but I didn't listen to the angel he sent. Right. Instead, I let experience be my worst teacher. Right. And I did have to learn a lot of lessons in that. But yeah. thank goodness I am learning and still growing and still making, again, better decisions than I ever made before. Well, and I think it comes down to making adjustments. You know, it, it's kind of like that truck driver. You know, they've done those studies on how many times does a truck driver in an eight-hour drive make little tiny, oh, what they call them, micro adjustments. Tens of thousands. Tens of thousands of adjustments yeah. when really he thinks he's making none. Right. Except for major turns and, right. and whatnot. But I think in our Christian walk, that's what God is always trying to do. But he gives us a choice. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn. Yeah. It's either going to be from experience or it's going to be through the wisdom of God. He yeah. works through man or through his word. Yeah. But we're going to learn. Amen. Yeah. So when we look, I want to read this scripture. And this goes back to what I call the process of God. Deuteronomy 8, verse 1, every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply mm. and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. You know, some of our most difficult times – we're thinking we missed God. We're think and God's actually leading us yes. into that. Yes. But why? Because He had the foresight of I have rescued a people out of bondage, but they don't have a village. They yeah. don't have an army. They don't have character to build cities. They yeah. don't have any of this. There's no infrastructure. No. None. And so he said, be careful to remember. Be careful to remember. That's what Moses said. Remember. Be careful to remember. And, you know, when God is working at us, we have to remember the blessing mm -hmm. when we're in the wilderness. Yeah. Or we won't survive it. Yeah. We got to remember there's a reason for the madness. There's a reason yeah. for this test. There's a reason for this. There's a reason for that. For example, what God told Moses. He said, I left you in the wilderness to humble you and to test you to see what was in them, mm -hmm. whether they would obey the Lord or not. Right. And even Moses failed the test. Yeah, he did. He struck the rock. Yeah. And so what this book and this teaching is about is if we can learn, just like I learned at that age, you know, when I was a young pastor at seven years old into the ministry, mm -hmm. I thought I had succeeded. I didn't realize I hadn't even begun. Right. Because I hadn't lived through the wilderness experiences. My character hadn't been tested. Will you get bitter or will you get, get better? better. Yeah. Will you become distrustful and wounded and spend the rest of your life looking over your shoulder, waiting for who's going to stab you next and right. therefore becoming rendered ineffective in ministry? Right. Or will you simply learn the lesson of God of saying, next? Well, and the first lesson I think we all have got to learn is that it, we're not traveling this road by ourselves. It's mm -hmm. like you said earlier. Everybody has to travel this road. Mm -hmm. So we might as well get on track right. and learn it now because, you know, I think a lot of times people get discouraged and they don't believe their second, third, or fourth or however many chances to get things right. Mm -hmm. But God has made a way. He's gone before us. Mm -hmm. But in my life experiences, this is my microcosm, is – if I don't learn the first time, the lesson doesn't get easier. Right. It gets harder. Right. If I'm learning by experience. Yeah. So if, if we can if we can allow the wisdom of God and his word to come to life and you're an apostle. Mm -hmm. You bring government. You have men and women under you. If we can listen to the people that have gone before us right. and are making a way, right. it'll save so much heartache. Right. You know, I think one of the biggest things everyone with a calling of God you know, when, when we talk about potential, I got to remember, what is potential? Mm. It's a piece of potent. Mm -hmm. God is omnipotent. Potent. So what he does is he pinches off a piece of himself. Oh, this is good. Yeah. And he puts it in you, mm -hmm. and you have potential. Yeah. 
But then he gives us all these warnings with our potential. Wow. He has to humble us because we'll take his potential and let it go to our head. Yeah. And we'll become little Nazis in the spirit. Right. We'll become little Pharaohs in the spirit. Mm -hmm. We'll get a more of opinion of ourselves than we ought to have. Mm -hmm. I remember specifically another wilderness experience I had as a young leader. Because before this, during this seven-year period of, I'm going to call the blessing years, I literally got an attitude because we were the fastest. I mean, we came into a city, started with 300 bucks, with nothing. And literally in five years, we were the most influential church in the whole county. We were outgrowing every church in that part of the state, actually. We were blessed, blessed, blessed. Yeah. I mean, like I say, it was as though we could do nothing wrong. Right. We had influence that was ridiculous. Yeah, it's like the wind of the spirit to yeah. your back. You were just going. And man, we were just enjoying life, living large and in charge. Well, I started getting this attitude. I was the guy. Right. And that if the other pastors knew what I knew, they could do this too. And I literally started getting spiritual pride. Mm. Now, I didn't recognize it at the time. Right. Well, neither did Israel. Neither yeah. did Moses. No. Nope. Neither do most of you listening to this broadcast no. today. No. Nope. Neither did King Spiritual Saul. Spiritual pride is, you know, it's like it's like bad breath. Yeah. You're you the may last be the to only know. one in the room that know you got it, right? Yeah. You're the last one to know you got right. it. Right. And so I, I, I began to walk through this again, this process where I had this attitude. And I remember I would listen to other preachers preach, and I would just critique them. Right. Everything oh, man, they did I'm wrong. just like... Oh, you know what you're talking about, blah, 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 right. you know, and, and I just had a big head yeah. for my, quote, little success, and it was a little success. I mean, it yeah. wasn't like we were a worldwide ministry, you know, right. we were a little tiny, We, I was a big fish in a very small pond, right? right? Yeah. And so I remember as we went through, again, this process, something started happening, you know, again, the first seven years, nobody could say anything bad about Dave Chisholm, mm -hmm. you know? The second seven years, it seemed nobody could say anything good about Dave Chisholm. Mm. And so I started recognizing I'm being unduly criticized. Right. I'm being I'm not deserving the criticism I'm getting, right? right. I knew that in my life, in my right. heart, but it wasn't changing nothing of how people saw me or uh -huh. treated me. And I started fasting and praying. And I'll never forget this night, you know. It's like you have these defining moments in life. So right. I've been on a three-day fast, and I'm asking God, why does everybody – why is everybody out to get me? Why mm -hmm. is everybody out to criticize me? Why is it that I get critiqued on everything I do? And so on the third night of the fast, I went out in my backyard, and I was praying. And I remember there was a big apple tree in our backyard, mm -hmm. and I was standing under that apple tree. And the word of the Lord came to me. And I'm looking at all these rotten apples on the ground, hanging oh, on the tree. Yeah. And he said, you don't like your harvest? Change your seed. Man. And I heard myself critiquing mm. all these other pastors of oh, how they couldn't gosh. do anything right. Yeah. I had all the answers. Right. And I began to repent before God. Wow. And I began to say, Lord, I am sorry. Wow. I am not the Bible answer man, you know. Yeah. I've made enough mistakes, too, and blah, 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 blah. Well, the crazy thing was is once I recognized that and stopped being the, pre the pulpit critic of America, right? it was amazing how quickly that harvest changed. And it was just like somebody flipped a switch. Wow. I changed my seed. And see, we forget the mercy and grace of God. Mm -hmm. We think that we're going to be, we've got a gotcha God, that we're going to be under the penalty of a mean father. Mm -hmm. But that's not how he works. He right. just wants us to see the truth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Children of Israel, it took them 40 years before they could even begin to walk in to their blessing. Yeah. 40 years. And we think again today, we think... Well, we're Christians. That was the Old Testament, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I walk through this process of God and I go through these scriptures, and here again, let's keep reading in Deuteronomy. 
Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping His commandments, His judgments, His statutes, which I command you today. Lest when you've eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses to dwell in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up. Wow, here it is. And you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Mm -hmm. Egypt from the house of bondage. Now we see the human return to pride right so you came into the humility of the cross Mm -hmm. but at the first step of the process of god which is the blessing right you have a restoration not of walking in that new point of humility in life but now your pride comes back right and you start thinking i'm all that again yeah and we see that in the church all the time yeah we We see families come in destitute yeah Destitute. They apply God's principles. They submit themselves to authority, and all of a sudden, boom! They're blessed, they're blessed, 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 and then walking in God's... two or three years later, mm-hmm. haven't seen them in a month. Where have they been? Well, how dare you try to correct me? Yeah. How dare you accuse me of backsliding? How right. dare you this? Oh, how dare I know? It is my own power, my own might. And then verse fifteen: Who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, in which were fiery serpents, scorpions, and a thirsty land where there was no water? Who brought you water out of the flinty rock? Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know? Hmm. Again, that he might humble you and test you to do good in the end. Then you say in your heart, "My power and my might have gained me this wealth." Wow. You know, everybody wants to consider themselves an exception to the rule. Yeah. Self-made person. I I have a little saying of that that I I think the Holy Ghost gave me several years ago. When you consider yourself an exception to any rule, you've just taken the first step in the journey of a fool. Boy, that's good. And that's what Israel did. That's right. You know, they began to allow their blessing Mm -hmm. to become their curse. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is so obvious, but I'm telling you, I have lived through this process multiple cycles in my almost 40 years of doing this. Well, and you say it's so obvious, and it is, but yet when you're in it, you you are so blinded. Yeah, unless you are illuminated by the scriptures. You know, in fact, this book, this book right here, Mm -hmm. hashtag follow, I, I was given this book. I was in this process mm-hmm. of going through all this stuff, and I, my pastor had invited me down to a meeting right. in Fort Worth for our annual conference. And again, I was so broke, he paid my way. Mm-hmm. He paid me to be there. And uh, Rodney Howard Brown was doing that meeting. So in a morning session, you know, Rodney used to lay hands on every person, every service. Yeah, And I'll never forget, I was... I was in the back, and I remember exactly where I was in that auditorium, and Rodney was laying hands on people, and I had just went through this church split, and when Rodney laid his hand on me, I hit the floor, and when I hit the floor, I was in a trance. I was Mm. in a suspended state, and I had a dialogue with the Lord that was so incredible. It's like me and you right now. Wow. And he began to, he gave me this book in 10 minutes. Wow. He told me the whole process of God in 10 minutes on, like I say, Pastor Frank had opened the door for Mm -hmm. the breaking of the bread, but he took me through the book of Exodus and he said, I'm going to teach you how to uncover human nature. Wow. And I want you to go home and teach us. Well, at that time, I was being accused by my accusers of being too too power hungry, a control freak, and you know me, I'm not a control right, freak. Anything but, but they wanted control, so they accused me right. of what they were actually doing, which yeah. that's kind of normal in life. Sure. And I'll never forget when he told me this, he said, I want you to go home and teach this. And I said, Lord, they're already calling me a, co- a control freak. If I go back and try to teach on authority, they'll crucify me. But it had the adverse effect. Really? I went home and I taught this for like six weeks in our church. Wow. And peace came back to the government of the house. Because what happened is that Jezebel spirit that Mm -hmm. had tried to usurp authority and assume control and manipulate, that spirit was driven out by the light of God's truth. Wow. 
powerful. And and so it it worked. Yeah. But uh, and I kept this book. I wrote this book like literally clear back in uh, ninety four, maybe ninety three, ninety four. Right. And I only released it just a couple of years ago. Yeah. And I finally put it together, and I, I remember Cleta was helping me rewrite it, and I mm-hmm. told her, I said, I got a book I've had in my office for over 20 years, and it's time to print it. You yeah. Know? And yeah. Uh, so this this book, like I say, I think it's a masterpiece only in the sense of it's the Scripture revealed of how God uncovers mm-hmm. the real human nature against the new creation in Christ. Right. And if I can, you know, the hardest thing to do is to see the bad, the the bad things or the wrong things in yourself. Right. And God gave us a whole mirror here that can help us see wow. the booger in our nose, yeah, the spit on our lip, right. the food in our beard, the matter in our eye. Yeah. He can help us see the piece of hair sticking up. It's a mirror. To help you work through mm. character flaws that are really marring the image of Christ in you, the world sees, which is the hope of glory. Right. So wow. we're, we're out of time already. But yeah. I encourage Jeepers. you, and if you want to go on, it go to our store online. You know, we'll make a special deal on these two books. Hashtag follow and hashtag lead. If mm-hmm. you have not had these, we'll give them both to you for fifteen bucks. You yeah, know? that's a deal. Um, I can't tell you how many about that much haven't printed. Yeah, and I can't tell you what conference time how many of these that you've given out to young pastors yeah. and leaders and, and, and the feedback that oh. these guys have. I mean, they call us and they, they're like, this is a game changer. Oh, the other day, I, mean, I, I had mentioned this book and, and the other day a young guy come up to me and, and he's an aspiring young leader and he said, you gave me that book. It was from our Columbus church. He said, mm. you gave me that book like a year ago and I still haven't read it. And I looked right back at him. I said, I wish I would have charged you. <laughs> right. And he looked at me. He said, what do you mean? I said, no if value. I would have charged you, you'd have read it. But you put no value in yep. it because it was a gift. He said, I promise. I'll go read it. You know? <laughs> yeah. I said, you better. You know. <laughs> Amen. Well, we're going to pray over you right now. Again, we thank you for watching this with us yeah. today as we share many, many decades of ministry experience i don't like reinventing wheels that's one of my biggest thing i hate reinventing wheels and if i can help you miss one yeah. bad day then i'm i'm here to do it right i want to help you have good days you can't do it any other way there's a whole culture right now that thinks i want my sin i want you to approve it and i want no curse to be attached yep. no and accountability. i'm sorry that ain't happening no nope. that ain't happening so mm-hmm. i'm gonna pray over you right now father i just pray for everyone listening to this rock cast and i pray that you help open the eyes of their understanding to see this process of god i pray that each one listening would be able to take fully into their heart their heart of understanding how to walk through this character development that Jesus must do in all of us. This is not something we'll ever Mm. escape. This is something we must navigate, and I pray that they do it successfully. We bless you. We bless your families. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Hey, if you know someone you think this teaching could be a blessing to, share this with them. Hit the little bell on your thing there, and you'll be alerted when we do another one of these, and we'll be doing this series here for the next several weeks. God bless you.